I am going to discuss on the topic echolocation in cetacea. What is echolocation? Echolocation is the emission of sound pulses and use of returning echoes to gain the information about the surrounding environment. And echolocation is also known as bisonet. Using sound made by the animal itself and the animal echolocation has only one transmitter and receiver organs are the two, that is the two ears, and that are positioned slightly apart. And ranging is done by measuring the time delay between the animal's own sound emission and the echoes that return from the environment. So the echoes returning to the two ears arrive at different times and at different loudness levels that depends on the position of the objects generating the echoes. <clears throat> so the time and the loudness, so the time and the loudness difference are used by the animals to perceive the distance and the directions. Now, <clears throat> the microchiropteran bats and the odontocetes, especially the tooth whales and the dolphin, uh, that produce sound and detect location and shape of the objects in the environment by listening the echoes. And echolocation is also found among one genus of megachiropterian bats. That is the example, rousetters and two cave dwelling uh, birds, aerodromas, that also perform the echolocation. And the term echolocation was coined by Donald Griffin whose work with Robert Galambos was the first to conclusively demonstrate its existence in bats in 1938. And echolocation in odontocetes was not properly described before two decades later by Seville and McBride. And 18% of the mammals that perform echolocation. Among mammals, most bats, Eudarma, Desmodas, Scotophilus, that part from echolocation. Odontocyte cetaceans, that part from echolocations. Some slew, that part from echolocation. And some are uh, 10 races, that also part from echolocation. 18 persons of the mammals, that part from the echolocation. And uh, in our uh, topic, uh, that's the order uh, cetacea, that include uh, whale, dolphin, and porpoises, that part from the echolocation. Now, uh, what are the basic types of the echolocation? There are three basic types of the echolocations, uh, nasal, lingual, and the laryngeal. The nasal, uh, that part formed by the odontocyte cetaceans, chiroptera, among chiroptera, the family are the nycteridae, megadermatidae, rhinolophidae, hypocidaridae, phylostomidae. And uh, small odontocytes, that are the dolphin, porpoises, orca, and the large odontocytes, palm soils, that palm from the echolocation. Now, uh, the lingual types, that's uh, done by uh, clicking the tongue, that's uh, performed by the old world uh, fruit bats, rousetus, and the laryngeal echolocation, that is uh, all other echolocating bats, rest of the bats uh, echolocating uh, in this manner, and uh, sriu and tin rushes, they also perform the echolocation uh, by the type, uh, by the category laryngeal. Now, uh, what is echolocation? Echolocation is the emission of the sound pulses and the use of returning echoes to gain information about surrounding environment. And echolocation is used for navigation and for hunting in various environments. Animals use echoes to locate, range, and identify the object. With echolocation, the animals can see not only where it is going, but also how big another animal is and what kind of the animal it is and other features also. And water transmit sounds extremely efficient. Tooth whales have developed the capability of emitting sounds that travel from their melons and reflect off the objects like bats, odontocytes, use this echolocation process to gather information in order to see the world around them. Now, <clears throat> two terms are important. 
uh, what is the frequency and what is the wavelength? Frequency, that is a pitch of the sound that measure in hertz or kilohertz. That is a number of the cycle, number of the cycle per unit time. And another is a wavelength. If you see that's a wavelength A, that is a distance in between the two wavelengths, whereas in case of the other is a wavelength B, that is a distance from one peak to another peak of a sound wave. That is a wavelength. Now, uh, echolocation uh, in uh, water and what are the echolocation in the air? What are the difference? Uh, echolocation in water that takes less energy, pulses travel further, reach target faster, and echoes return faster also. Sound travels four to five times more in water in comparison to air. And intensity of a given frequency is higher in water and sound attenues more slowly in water. Echolocation in water provides long range information. In case of the sperm whale, the area is 1,500 meter, whereas in case of the bats, that's restricted to 2.5 to 62 meter only. Now, what are the problems faced by the aquatic animals in echolocation? A sound travels about five times faster in water as in air, and therefore the wavelength of any sound frequency is five times longer in water than in the air. Now the second problem that is faced by the cetacea is the difficulty of matching of acoustic impedance. What is acoustic impedance? The ratio of the pressure over an imaginary surface in a sound wave to the rate of particle flow across the surface. Now the acoustic impedance of the air, that of the water, and sound energy is not transmitted well across an air-water interface, about 99.9% .9 energy that reaches such an interface is reflected and only 0.1% that crosses the boundary. Now, another problem that occurs during efficiency of transmission of sound energy from water into the body tissue, especially fats and muscle, a very high proportion of acoustic energy that strikes on the body surface is absorbed through the tissue, echoing back and forth to produce diffuse bud that conveys no directional information. That are the problems faced by the aquatic animals. Now, how the problems are solved? Cetacea solve these problems by following this, what are the way? Odontocyte cetacea use excluding high frequency sound. That is, uh, in case of uh, bottle knot porpoises, the frequency 20 to 220 kilohertz for echolocation. And uh, the second problem that is faced difficulty of the matching of the acoustic impedance of the air, that of the water, that is solved by the middle air. Sound receiving organ, that is a sound receiving organ, has been abandoned. The inner ear has been isolated. Sound propagated through body tissue and conducted into the inner ear via a special fat body that extends from lower jaw to the auditory bulla. The auditory bulla that is composed of extremely dense bones, which does not transmit sound radially, and is separated from the rest of the skull by soft sound absorbing tissue. Thus the inner ear is isolated from sound approaching for other parts of the body. Now, the last problem that occurs during the efficiency of the transmission of the sound energy from water into the body tissue, especially fats and muscles and high proportion of the acoustic energy that strikes on the body surface is absorbed through the tissue echoing back and forming a barge, uh, barge uh, noise. And so they have no any directional information. So the intramandibular fat body receives the sound energy that receives the sound energy through acoustic window. That is a window. That is a window is the acoustic window that is formed by a very thin bone on the side of the mandible and sound penetrates this bone 
and absorbed by fat body, which serves as wave guide and conducting the sound wave to bulla. Thus, instead of middle ear, sound is perceived by lower jaw. That is reported by Norris, 1974. Now, uh, uh, how the sound is produced? You know, in case of the diving animals, some are with a limited supply of the oxygen. So for them, it is undesirable to waste any oxygen supply by bubbling air out of the mouth. Norris 1974 uh, suggested that the site of the sound production in Cetacea that has shifted from larynx to complex system, larynx to complex system of the nasal passage and diverticula that extends upward from the pharynx to blowhole, that is a blowhole, which is located on the top of the head. Now, how the sound is produced? Air is forced back and put into the nasal passage and diverticula and produce sound energy, which is reflected forward from the broad anterior surface of the skull and probably focused by acoustic lens, that is oil filled melon and the fat body is the characteristic feature of the odontocyte cetaceans and that is responsible for external shape of the head. So, so first, uh, echolocation that involves the emissions of the sounds and reception of its echo. The air that's forced back by the lips when the lips are closed and that producing the vibration. So vibration transmitted through fluid filled sacs that's around the lips and reflect of the cranium and propagated through oil filled melon. And melon act as acoustic lens. So the beams of the sound focused by the melon and the sound vibration transmitted by oil filled sinus in dentary to the auditory bulla. That is a uh, sound uh, vibration that is uh, transmitted. Now the auditory bulla are not fused with cranium that is surrounded by the connective tissue and mucus and air field uh, sinuses. That is a uh, procedure of the sound production and uh, sound uh, receiving. So uh, when uh, the sound is emitted in the head region and focused by the melon, the receptacles pass through the special sound conducting tissue in the lower jawbone of the inner ear. And uh, scientists, all scientists do not agree about where the sound comes uh, from. And some scientists suggest that sound is emitted from a nasal plug, that the shape of the melon is altered by the muscles to focus sound. But other group of the scientists believe that the larynx emits sounds and argue that echolocation focusing is achieved by bouncing sound of various parts of the skull. But that is not accepted by all. So, uh, when the cetacea perform echolocation, sound passes from one medium to another. And when it leaves the cetacean head, during this transmission, the sound energy is lost by reflection as it would be in air to water transmission. But the second waves may be bent. It seems likely that the melon serves as a flexible lens, changing its shape from moment to moment to beam the sound energy in different desirable directions. The melon of the cetacea that changes shape very conspicuously during echolocation. The focus beam is modulated by this large fatty organ. This acts like an acoustic lens because it is composed of lipids of different density. The echolocating sounds of the bottle nose for poisons that's vary from 20 to 220 kilohertz. And the written sound that is channelized through the mandibular fat bodies and is especially the acoustic window of the lower jaw to the inner ear. Now the ability of the porpoises to detect object and to distinguish between similar objects is remarkable. In an experiment, it was revealed that a bottle nose porpoise was able to distinguish between two steel balls. One is 157 millimeter in diameter another 64 millimeter from a distance of two meter within 1.5 second, they can detect and they can differentiate between two balls. And it was also reported the animals was able to distinguish between fresh fish and dead fish. Even they judge the difference between different species. 
echolocation from a dolphin is so sensitive, it can detect the heartbeat of a child inside a mother's home. That is interesting. Now, uh, what are the uses of the echolocation? In aquatic ecosystem, odontocetes uh, cetacea use their echolocation ability for following purposes. Echolocation is uh, valuable uh, to tooth whales, including dolphins, porpoises, river dolphins, pillar whales, and sperm whales. As they live in underwater habitats where vision is extremely poor, so they use echolocation to detect and locate the prey. The high frequency sound that are concentrated in narrow beam are probably used to detect the prey. And dive of 1,000 meter, probably routine work for sperm whales. So the navigation that is also apart from with the help of the echolocating power of that particular species. The low frequency sound that are beamed in a broad would reflect uh, from large object and probably an important component of the navigations. And uh, echolocations also used for searching the mate. These are the reference books, Dolphin uh, Biosonar Echolocation. That is a case study by James uh, T. Fulton, Vertebrate Biology, uh, Donald Lenje, Biology of the Animals, Volume 2, Ganguly, Shina, Adhikari, and Goswami. And these are the particular webs. With the help of this web and Google, I have uh, collected the maximum image that are mentioned in my lecture. Thank you, everybody.